Glenn, this is, I suppose, the, the business end of the, the qualifying campaign. And when the draw was made, we could always see that these two away fixtures back to back were going to be fairly defining. How are you feeling about them? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, we're in a great position at the minute. But uh, we know it's going to be really tough. Um, obviously, Georgia first and foremost, uh, concentrate on that and hopefully get the right result and brings confidence and it'll give everyone um, no big lift going into the, the, the Switzerland game then as well. So. Georgia have been getting closer to us though, would you say, over the years? I mean, they're a familiar uh, foe for us, um, but there's a sense almost that, you know, we've seen how good they've been against to get a result against Denmark, that they, they might owe us one. Yeah, um, I think I've been out there now a couple of times and I've never had an easy game. We've we've been um, got a couple of results and now kicked us on, but like you said there, I think most nations now will, will give anybody a good game. And for us, I think basically it's what we can do first and foremost. And, um, now look after yourself then but now it's going to be a tough game Georgia kind of um, features in your career quite a bit because do you remember the, the game in Mainz it was, it was moved we were supposed to be away and it was moved to, to Germany um, so notable for, for, for you and the goal in particular as well yeah I think so I think I still owe that goalkeeper a few quid um, <laughs> for chucking her in that day but yeah listen um, the Georgia when I was with in, in Germany that time for me being the newcomer it was it was all new so it was just lapping everything up whereas now you're a, the older campaigner and the other lads who've, who've not been out to Georgia or don't really know too much about them but like I said we'd be telling everyone that it's Georgia but it's going to be a tough game. That period that campaign under under Trapp he, he, he clearly liked you he had you in from the start and you were more or less than ever present. Yeah at the time um, we first came in got taken to a training camp from nowhere really and he seen something, something in me and now stuck with me but I think it was a case of with the manager at the time he, he told me to do certain things and I'd done them for him and I think that's what he liked about it um, having a little bit of discipline and, and how, his, how his teams play and now we're set into it I was just unfortunate at the time of, um, Stephen Reid was sort of looking after me and, and then he got a serious uh, injury so going from um, looking up to somebody to be probably one of the the older heads then in such a short time that was um, that was hard but I really enjoyed it but I think he admired your professionalism I mean you you had to do a job that you were given isn't that fair to say yeah I think so I think listen the, the manager all managers have a certain way of playing and especially under uh, Giovanni um, I think when he, no matter who I played alongside was it, if it was Keith um, James McCarthy they they were the ones who had more license to go and get goals or get in the box whereas if you see some of the sessions that I was taking, I was like, don't move, stay there, look after and um, what's behind. But like I said, it was the manager and that was my job and I was told to do and probably why you played uh, so many games. And all. I remember the goal against Italy though. I mean, that was kind of every boy's dream sort of goal, wasn't it? And um, Would you have liked to be given more licence? I think so. I think a any player wants to score the goals or get into the box. Um, and I I'm no different. When I was at Sheffield Wednesday, I was a goal scorer midfield I tried to get in and then obviously when I went to Stoke the manager there um, seen a different type of player in me and now that changed but listen the manager picks the team and if I want to play in the team then I'm going to listen to him There's a kind of a recurring theme as well you mentioned Stoke City and you got promoted to the Premier League you were linked with a, a move away at that stage but you said no I'm going to knuckle down I'm going to win my place back and, and you did it Yeah no, there's, there's a lot of things that they'll be throwing at you throughout your career and I was never one for um, throwing in the towel um, every summer, I think if you've seen that, um, Stoke City, every summer there was new midfielders coming in and it was always a challenge and a challenge that I accepted and now kept my head down but I've always been that type of lad, even as a kid if if something, an obstacle got in my way I was like getting over it and now it was all about me in the end but now listen. Well, where do you think that comes from Glenn? Uh, I don't know, it's grown up, I don't know, parents, um, no, I, just, I just think it's always from a, a hard working family and um, I would like to think that it's still in me there somewhere. And who did you admire growing up? Like who were the players and the people that kind of you know you modelled yourself on if you like? Yeah well obviously I've said before I was a Liverpool fan as a kid um, but going back to John Barnes was probably one of my, well, when we were on the streets and, and playing John Barnes is who I wanted to be but even going back to, to Ireland obviously Roy, Paul McGrath before that big fan um, I've said that quite a bit so yeah I, ju I just think there's there's all different types of players out there that you, you try and take little bits of so but for me being Liverpool it was either John Barnes or Robbie Fowler so 
Well, your, your job in many respects has been to stop flair players like that from playing for, for such a long period of time. And, and you've done such a, a professional job at it. But the criticism that you received from, from home, from some quarters, from RTE at times, I mean, how, how did you feel about that? Yeah, and no, I, was, I was disappointed. You, you obviously, you, you want to be the main man and you want to be getting, I don't know, eight out of ten every week. And it wasn't the case, but I just, there were certain things and I stepped away from doing press and, and, and doing stuff because there was things said and it, it got a little bit personal, whereas I think it was where I was from was brought up and certain cars that I was supposed to be driving, which I didn't. And, and that stuff I was just thinking, do you know what? I don't need it. So I just kept my head down. Um, listen, like I said to you, there's, there's people out there who will criticise no matter how good I do. But I've got rhino skin. Um, do you know what I mean? I'll take it on the chin and now I'll just get on with it. Um, I've played 88 times for Ireland now and nobody can take that away from me. But it must have been very hurtful on a personal level. For, for me, it was fine. As in, it's it's football. You you accept it. You take it. It's it's part and parcel of of playing, being a player. But wife, mum, and dad. I've got two kids now who are who are grown up, and when they start saying it, they they didn't particularly like it, and th they were very hurtful of it. But like I said, it's what can you do? with do you, do, you, do you sit back and accept it or do you just knuckle down and, and, and keep at it? So for me, it was a case of, do you know what, I'm not going to listen to anybody. The manager wants me to play. He keeps picking me, so I must be doing something right. Because you've had such a career. I mean, you know, you talk about the Euros 2012 for Ireland to qualify for that was a, a great achievement. When we got there, it mightn't have gone so good, but we were up against some of the best teams in the world. Um, you were 2016 as well. Uh, and at a club level, you know, the, the playoff finals, winning it. Uh, FA Cup finalist. I mean, th that is some career to look back on. Yeah, it's it's definitely even now um, going up to Hearts, and we've got a semi final to to look forward to. But for me, it's 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 something that I'll look back when I'm finished, and now really appreciate on a lad from Clondalkin and going on to play X amount of games and and doing so well. So now, listen, all I ever wanted to be was a footballer, and I'm still living the dream now. So. Um, I'll keep going as long as I can to to keep yeah, I don't know, just to, to keep the dream alive. So um now we've we've had some great times at Ireland and obviously we've had some downs as well, but you have to accept them. You mentioned the family of course and uh, they were all there for what looked like your retirement game. Uh, farewell ma match your eighty fifth cap against uh, Northern Ireland. Um did you feel that you were being retired? Well, to, to be honest with you, I got, a, the, I got a phone call from the manager and basically said to me he wanted me to come in um, against Northern Ireland and captain decided that he was basically going a different direction, bringing younger lads in and stuff. And, and, and I was more than happy with that, to, to come in, obviously to get so-called last cap before, before finishing. And I accepted that. I shook his hands and obviously the results weren't great at the time. But then the manager left and the new manager's come back in. And I've... And I'll say it now, I'll, I'll never ever retire. I might not, I'll stop getting picked at some stage, but I won't ever retire. It's, it's my dream. I'm not going to just give it up so, so easy. So I um, got a phone call from, from Mick basically saying, I was I retired? And I said the same thing. I said, listen, I know where I stand now. I'm getting on a little bit. Um, young lad's coming through. And he just said to me, but if I need you, would you be available? And I said, of course. So... That was it then, a few months go past, squad's been announced and, and I'm back in. So, like I said, it's a dream of mine from f an early age, so to be still doing it now um, and, and playing a part, hopefully, in, in achieving something is what we want to do. So, now it's, it's been good. Matt O'Neill did say that uh, yourself and himself had the occasional difference of opinion. I'm, I'm aware of that one too. Um, did that affect your relationship with him, do you think? or? Was that a, a part of the, the issue? Uh, no, it's, it's, I just think it's me. It's we had we had a couple of run-ins where he was actually a referee in one of the games, and he gave a decision, and it kicked off a little bit. But I think that was just me wanting to win, or um, but no. I and think does that, that sort of thing happen more than we realise? Yeah, it does. It's it's massive. It's you ask any any player, you come down to train. I know you're only allowed in for a certain amount of time, but there's some sessions that are, are heated and go off, um, and that's the way you want to be. For me personally, it's trained the way you play. So, if you're pulling out tackles in training because you don't want to hurt somebody, like if you're doing it in training, you might want to do it in a game. And for me, it's it's not about that. I think I'm, I'm trying as hard as I can um, now to prepare myself for a game on a Saturday. But relationship with with Martin was 
we had a, a, a few tiffs, a few run-ins. Run -ins. He sent me home a couple of times, but now was uh, basically for me, it was forgotten about the next time round, so it was never, never an issue. And with Roy? Same, same. Roy was really good. Like I said earlier, somebody that I looked up to. Um, loved his professionalism. Um, little things, hated mobile phones, hated people being late. And for me, it was great because he got people on their toes. Um, so yeah, same same thing. We had a couple of run-ins. There's a few times it got really heated in the dressing room, but it was never a case of um, holding grudges or begrudging them after that. It was no, I wanted to learn from probably Ireland's greatest ever. So now I was I'd, I'd, I would I was pick his ears about something or um, asking questions, and now I think Roy liked that. So would. we move on to to the current campaign because. Many people wouldn't have imagined that we'd be in such a position at this stage of the group, but to be still in contention, very much in contention, uh, leading in the group uh, with these two games. You were involved, you were on the bench for the first game away to, to Gibraltar, but for the most important games, the ones that matter to make into the, the country, Switzerland, Denmark, Georgia, you, you were there for those. I mean, that must be good for, even at your age and with your experience, that must be good for your confidence. Yeah, I, like, I think, to be fair to the manager now, he, he basically... He told me before the Gibraltar game, he said, listen, don't even think about Gibraltar, um, that I'll be looking at you for the, the home game against Georgia. So straight away I knew once Gibraltar was coming around that I was not going to be playing. So um, now I think, it, I think obviously not being involved with what happened in the Nation League um, didn't go great for 12 months or so. And even some of the lads, it's, it's confidence, passion. So for new manager to come in, new coaching staff, few players, no, you're just trying to give somebody a lift. Um, probably the best game for us was probably Gibraltar to begin with. Um, getting results, coming back, and just get, gives everyone a little bit of a lift again. Um, so even even lads who who've played a long time, new manager comes in. You, you you want to impress them. You want to you want to stay in the team. So now I think that's been good, and we've got a few good young lads now coming through who are pushing us older lads on to for for starting spots now. So I, th I think the manager's been really good with the. Uh, friendly games and stuff given given lads experience and, and, and minutes on the pitch so hopefully we can just keep all pushing each other because due to a defensive crisis we may well have a, a we certainly have a different back four because Ender Stevens won't be able to start through suspension Shane Duffy may or may not make it with fingers crossed uh, Richard Keogh definitely uh, out so for you sitting in front of that kind of back four um, there will be a lot asked of your experience I guess yeah um, no it's just it's it's an opportunity now for someone to come in and there's a lot of lads who've been around the squad and have travelled many miles and haven't got the minutes that they wanted so um, like I said it's an opportunity for someone to come in and, and grab the jersey, the, the starting jersey now to, to get into the manager's thoughts but for my case please God if I'm, if I'm in the team Saturday um, yeah if you can call it experience but I'll be doing all I can to, to get a result and making sure other people around me are, are playing well or on, on top of the game so around the hotel in in the dressing room before games uh, are you uh, giving the other lads the benefit of that experience now or how does that work yeah I've, I've, i wouldn't be a ranter and raver to be honest as in going in and screaming and wrecking the place to be honest i'm not that type of but i just think training every day the standards that are set in training for myself i'd like to think that the other lads can see there's not many days where even even the manager here has asked me, do you want to train on a Monday? And I'm like, of course, I train every Monday. And he's going, oh no, I just don't know how what you do. So I think just by doing that and then the lads saying, whatever age I am, and I'm still out there training, you have the odd niggle, still train on. So that's that's the sort of experience that I'll give to them rather than ranting and raving. Because come Saturday, to be honest with you, the only thing I'm really worried about is, is my own performance. Conor Horan scored this weekend, Jeff Hendricks scored this weekend, Scott Hogan scored this weekend, Aaron Connolly was grabbing the headlines this weekend with two on his full debut. Um, it's a good place to be for the, the squad coming into a big game. Yeah, definitely. The, the lads have gone back and the, the, the two that you've mentioned, Force, Conor and Jeff, weren't in the team um, last month. So definitely turned things around and, and are playing really well. So yeah, I'm sure the manager wants the, the 23 lads he was in to, to all be playing week in, week out, but it's not the case. So. To have them lads, like you've said, come in, bit of confidence at the clubs, scoring goals, getting results, please God will uh, now give everyone a lift this week. There's only been one training session so far, but how does Connolly look? Yeah, listen, he came in, um, I don't know him personally, first time meeting him, but now it's 
these new young lads coming in, they they've got like um, a, a confidence about them, and now it's, it's especially he's went and he's backed that confidence up, getting two goals, and I watched the first half of the game. He was he was excellent, like so. Um, now it's first it, Irish teenager to score since Robbie. Thought I seen that first, yeah, the double, yeah. So straight away there they go. But the only thing is there, you you compare them to Robbie again. For me, it's like just leave them, let them, let them be Aaron rather than trying to compare them to. Ireland best ever, mm. most caps, most goals. Just, mm. just leave him, let him be for a bit. And now, if he if he's that good, then hopefully we'll get the best of him. Eighty-eight caps so far. Hopefully, a couple more in in, in the next week. Uh, century would be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be nice. Um, but, but if I have a chance of getting a century, we need to qualify. Um, so for me, desperate to play on Saturday to get the result, but. Landmarks. I don't want to. I don't want to get to a hundred playing. I don't know friendlies and no, just just being given five ten minutes. Here. It's, I don't want that. I want to be still involved, still competing for something. So for us, please God, um, now the Euros twenty twenty. That's what I'm aiming for. If I have a chance of getting a hundred, so hopefully.